Billy's Bloodlines, Searching for the Family of Billy Shears. Information about Billy's maternal family from memoirs. Reading through memoirs, we see dozens of hints that Billy is the magician's son. If Alistair Crowley is his father, who is his mother and who are her family? Did Billy have other guardians and benefactors besides her? Let's first look at information we can glean from memoirs. In the chapter about Sir William Wallace, the Braveheart, we learn that Billy claims to be the most direct descendant of Sir William Wallace. In this chapter, we also learn that he is of a Scottish and Irish background. He states that his grandmother was Helen, and his great-grandparents are John and Arlene Crawford. We learn that Helen had siblings, and so did Arlene. They are allegedly part of Billy's pedigree, linking him to Sir William Wallace. We also see that Billy's grandmother, Helen, was still alive when he was born. She was the one that added Billy's name, William Wallace Shepherd, to her family tree, which was written into an old family Bible. On page 391 of Memoirs, Billy describes his mother playing piano, mainly show tunes, when he was a little boy. He also describes himself playing that same piano, which had a broken piano stall from being overfilled with sheet music. On page 20 of Memoirs, we learn that, like Paul McCartney, his mother died when he was young, and that he had a dream visitation of her just before writing the song Let It Be. On the footnote of page 587, Billy also talks about his prenatal torture and being abandoned as a child. Only Mama Knows As well as the information in memoirs, the lyrics to the song Only Mama Knows may also contain clues about Billy's background. And here is an extract of some of those lyrics. Well, I was found in the transit lounge of a dirty airport town. What was I doing on the road to ruin? Well, my mama laid me down. Around my hand was a plastic band with a picture of my face. I was crying, left to die in this God-forsaken place. Only mama knows why she laid me down in this God-forsaken town. She was running too. What was she running from? I always wondered. I never knew. Only Mama knows. I'm passing through. I'm on my way. On the road, no ETA. I'm passing through, no fixed abode. And that is why I need to try to hold on. Was it planned as a one-night stand? Or did she leave in disgrace? Well, will I never, will I ever see my father's face. The official story of Only Mama Knows. On page 565 of the lyrics, which is the official memoirs of Sir Paul McCartney, it says this about the story behind the song. A friend of mine was adopted when he was a baby. He and his brother were left in an orphanage they were brought up in the orphanage and never knew their mother. He weathered the experience very well, but his brother struggled. I use this true life story to create an imaginary situation that anchors the song. It's a song written from the point of view of someone who's been left behind, someone who's been abandoned. My friend was with me when I wrote this song just as he was with me when I recorded it. We talked openly about it. He would always wonder why his mother left him. He sort of knew what the story was, that she'd been knocked up by some guy who was just passing through. In those days there was a lot of shame. A woman wasn't supposed to have babies if she wasn't married. And then there was the sheer financial hardship of raising a child. Some new questions, and the surname of Shepherd. The lyrics to Only Mama Knows raise a lot of questions. 
Is Billy actually referring to himself in these lyrics? Who is the brother? Is it Mike McCartney? Was he adopted? He doesn't look like Paul or his parents. Or, alternatively, does Billy have another brother? Maybe he's a twin. Billy says that the part of the story about passing through is describing the behaviour of the biological father in the story. It reminded me immediately of the behaviour of Alistair Crowley. Other questions that arise are to do with who actually raised him. Crowley died when he was ten and was largely absent in the lives of all of his children. Billy says his mother died when he was young, so who raised him? His biological mother or some other member of his biological family? Or was he adopted? Is the Crawford family mentioned in memoirs his biological family or an adopted one? And how did he get the name of Shepherd? I can only think of four options. Number one, his grandmother married into the name, passed it on to his mother, who then gave her maiden name to Billy. Two, Billy's mother married into the name and gave Billy's stepfather's surname to Billy. Three, Billy is adopted and his adopted parents gave him the name. Or four, Billy, or someone else in his background, made up the name. So let's talk strategies. Firstly, I don't really expect to track down Billy's maternal family. Memoirs is written in such a way that they are not meant to be found. However, I love logic puzzles and I love a challenge. I decided that there were several ways to attack this problem. Number one, follow all of Sir William Wallace's family lines towards present day until I find the Crawford family mentioned in memoirs. Number two, Billy claims to be a descendant of a line of known peerage. Therefore, there should be records of people that fit the descriptions of the Crawford family he describes in memoirs, and these families should be investigated. Number three, consider Alistair Crowley's female relationships at the time that Billy would have been conceived. In truth, I have followed all three of these methods. The first method has findings so vast that it will have to have its own video. In this video, I will just show you my research for methods two and three. So here we have a Crawford Walker family tree. Because Billy claims to be a descendant of Sir William Wallace, all of his family are either knights, baronets, or lords, or so forth, they are all kept in records of peerage. And so when we search these records for a John Crawford who had a daughter Helen, who were alive at a time fitting to be Billy's grandmother and great-grandfather, and who also came from Scotland and were connected to the Crawford family, that are connected to Sir William Wallace, this family you see right now are about the only family I can find that fit all of those descriptions. And I want to make a disclaimer that I am not claiming that this is Billy's family. I'm just saying that when we look for people that fit the description in memoirs, this is about as close as I have got. And so here we have Helen Alexander Crawford in the position of being Billy's grandmother and her father, John Shields Crawford, who was married to Elizabeth Walker. And in this somewhat imaginary scenario, if Billy's mother is a descendant from this Crawford and Walker family, then I can well understand the situation. Because this Crawford family are the Crawfords of Crawford's Biscuits and this Walker family are the family of Johnny Walker Whiskey. And these were two of Scotland's biggest brands and biggest manufacturers at the time of Billy's birth. 
And if Billy's mother came from this Crawford Walker family, having a child out of wedlock would have made her a complete disgrace. And so this story would match the story of Only Mama Knows. I'm going to state again. I'm not claiming that this is his family. I'm saying it's the best fit that I've found. And there could be others that I haven't found yet. Or equally, all records of his family could have been wiped. And that's also very possible. But this was an interesting piece of research that I found. And I wanted to share it. And so we also have Crowley's own family. And I've given just a small section of this family tree as well. Alistair Crowley claimed to be Irish, and I always found that hilarious. Um, because I have a small family tree of Crowley. It's only about five generations, but they're all English. And whilst it's true that one line goes back to Cheshire, and I suppose eventually that will go back to Liverpool, and from there it could well go back to Ireland, Currently, I find very little that is Irish about him. And I say that as someone who is half Irish myself. My father was from Donegal. Most of my living family were born and raised in Ireland. And at family reunions, I am very much the odd one out with this accent. Next, we look at method three to find the moment of conception. And I've read many biographies of Alistair Crowley. According to Alistair Crowley in England, Return of the Great Beast, Deirdre Patricia Maureen Doherty, referred to as Pat, and Alistair Crowley produced a son child from extensive sex magic rituals conducted in August 1936. The result was Randall Gare Doherty. Alistair called him Alistair Ataturk. He was born on the 2nd of May 1937. This is astrologically still Beltane, or May Day. Alistair considered Randall to be his heir. In the film Magical Mystery Tour, Billy claims to be 30 years old at a time when Paul McCartney would have been 25. This film was shot between the 11th and 25th of September 1967. In memoirs, Billy also states that he is five years older than Paul. Given this, he, like Randall, must have also been born in 1937. At one point, I did wonder whether Pat Doherty was Billy's mother too. If so, Randall and Billy would have to be fraternal twins. If Pat is not Billy's mother, Randall is still Billy's half-brother. If Randall is Crowley's heir, then Billy's date of birth must logically be somewhere between the 2nd of May 1937 and the 25th of September 1937. Working nine months backwards to find the date of Billy's conception brings us back to August 1936 through to December 1936. This gives us a five-month window of time when Billy would have been conceived. And so this is the book I was referring to earlier, Alistair Crowley in England, The Return of the Great Beast. This is from a series of biographies by Tobias Churton that were written directly from Alistair Crowley's diaries kept by the OTO. And so in this particular book, I've noted all of the female friends that Crowley had in 1936. And here is a list, and I won't go through all of them. The ones at the top are the more important. Pearl Brooksmith was the last of the Scarlet Women, but we know that she cannot be Billy's mother because she had a hysterectomy in February 1936. We have Deirdre, Patricia, Maureen Doherty, who we mentioned earlier, we know that she had a son with Crowley called Randall, and I'll come back to her in a minute. We have Ruby Meville, and her death was noted in Crowley's diary with some affection, which I thought was interesting, considering that, frankly, he seemed to have very little respect for women. 
So for him to have actually noted any woman's passing with affection is unusual. And Ruby would have died when Billy was young, about two years old. And I will show a picture of her later, and you will see that she has red hair and a long face like Billy. Then we have Ursula Grenville. She was a pianist, soprano, and a sound engineer, which is very unusual for women of that time. She was professionally connected to Alistair Crowley, uh, but I'm not sure of whether she was sexually connected. Elsie Morris claimed to have had a child with Crowley. He was born in January 1936. This is too early to be Billy, and I think it was probably a girl because Crowley dismisses the child immediately. Then we have Greta Securia. She was definitely not a sexual partner. Crowley desperately tried to get her into bed and she wouldn't have a, a bar of him. Um, Eve Brackenberg. She was a repeat sexual partner of Crowley throughout the entire five-month window. And so I would desperately have loved to have found anything on her, but other than an address in London, I couldn't find anything about her. And then the rest of these characters, I think, are not really connected. I think they are just passing friends. With the exception of Iona Camel, formerly MacDonald, um, none of them have connections to Scotland either. And in fact, none of these women seem to have particular connections to Scotland, apart from Pat, who we'll see in a moment. So let's go on to the next slide. So this is Pat as a debutante. So age 19, Pat Doherty was introduced to Alistair Crowley via her first husband, Major Robin Tyne. Crowley was 59 at this point. Tyne and Crowley were involved in launching the publishing house, Mandrake Press, which was of limited success. Pat's parents were Phyllis Gotch, daughter of the painter Thomas Cooper Gotch, and Richard Patrick Doherty, a mining engineer from Ireland. Her father died in South Africa when she was three. Her mother remarried and gained the title Marquis de Bediera by marriage. Here she is with Pat on the 11th of May 1933 being presented to the Queen at Buckingham Palace by Lady Slessor and Madame Regis de Olivera. Pat went to medical school although I don't think she qualified as a doctor, and was in Edinburgh during her conception of Randall. From eyewitness accounts, she was said to have returned to Cornwall, England, after World War II, and raised not only her own four children, but adopted several others. Randall Gare Doherty In case Billy was actually a twin brother of Randall Doherty, I did a little research into his life too. Randall, seen here as a little boy with Alastair Crowley, was born in Newcastle, England on the 2nd of May 1937 and educated in Scotland at the excellent boarding school Gordonston. If Pat was a mother or guardian of Billy, I wondered whether Billy had been sent there too. In the 60s, he visited Kenneth Anger in the USA, but still considered Newlyn Cornwall, his home for much of his life. In Cornwall, England, he lived with his mother, Pat, and his three half-siblings, Bridget, Michael, and Astra McAlpine. They were children that Pat had with her second husband, the MI6 agent James McAlpine, who died on a secret mission in the Balkans at the end of World War II. Pat had been a base cipher officer in Egypt during the war. Randall married Jean Kissin in 1963 and had two children. This is Randall in 1976, aged 39. By the 1970s, Randall renamed himself Count Charles Edward Dockery and had designs to take over the UK government under his Supreme Council of Great Britain, an idea installed into him by his father, Alastair Crowley. He suffered from mental health problems for much of his life. Randall died in Chilton, Buckinghamshire on the 20th of November 
2002, aged 65. He had been involved in a car crash. Thomas and Phyllis Gotch. Pat Doherty's grandfather was the painter Thomas Cooper Gotch. In fact, both he and his wife, Caroline Yates, were painters. They met at the Slade School of Art in London. Here is one of his paintings from 1892 called My Crown and Scepter. The child featured is Phyllis Gotch, aged 10. This is Thomas's daughter and Pat's mother. Phyllis was educated in Scotland at St Catherine's in St Andrews. And this is another painting by Thomas Cooper Gotch called The Child Enthroned, painted in 1894. And here Phyllis is age 12. This is a still image of Pat from a British TV documentary made about Crowley in 2002. Pat died in 1992, aged 77, so this must have been filmed not that long before her death. By the time of her death, Pat was known as Pat McClellan. Whether she married for a third time is uncertain. There are not many women who still respected Alastair Crowley by the time of his death in 1947. In fact, he only had less than a dozen people at his funeral. In memoirs on page 111, there is a footnote that says, A woman of renown who revered William's father within that cultic circle identified William as a three-year-old musical prodigy. She selected him for initiation and training and shared her plan to use William's service to music to transform the world. Although details of the plan evolved over time, it eventually became focused on what William's father taught from the start. And so here we have a still image from Billy's 2007 music video for Dance Tonight. The music video is grounded in magic and lots of figures appear ghost-like in this video. These two paintings magically appear on the back of the kitchen cupboards in what is, I think, meant to represent Billy's home in Scotland. I couldn't help but think that the lady here reminded me of Pat. And so if we put them side by side, I wondered, is Pat the woman of renown in the occult that admired Billy's father, which is Crowley, and helped to train Billy? Is she the woman in this portrait painting? Is the portrait of the man her husband? Both of Pat's grandparents were painters. Are these paintings by one of them? Or is this couple the shepherd family that raised Billy and gave him that surname? I feel instinctively that this couple are important to Billy. And so now we turn to Ruby Meville, who I mentioned earlier as one of the female friends of Crowley. Ruby's birth name was Phoebe Georgina Frances Ruby Otway and the name Otway made me think of John Otway and he featured at an event in 2013 to mark the 70th anniversary of Vivian Stansall's quote-unquote birth. I have no idea whether they're connected but I thought it was interesting to note. Ruby was born in 1887 in Pimlico, London. She was raised in Mayfair and she came from a very good and very moneyed family. She died in 1939 when Billy would have been two years old and so she fits the criteria of a mother who died when he was young. This painting of her was by William Orpen in 1920. She would have been 30 years old in this painting. She had a very colourful life. She had four husbands and she travelled the world on cruise ships as a first-class passenger. Her first husband was George Armstrong, the only child of Dame Nellie Melba. They had a huge society wedding that included guests from royal family and the Rothschilds and had very 
lavish gifts, including a parcel of land in Ireland. The marriage didn't last, however, and she soon moved on to her second husband, James Meville, the name of which she always referred back to. That marriage also didn't last, and she moved on to her third husband. She ran off to Italy. She married the Olympic gold medalist Aldo Nardi, and he was a fencer. He was one of the best fencers that Italy ever produced. And again, that marriage didn't last. And she came back to England and she hooked up with a retired captain from the British Army called William Turner Coles. He had been married and had an affair with somebody else. And all parties came to know of this affair. There was a huge fight in the street. And in the melee, he accidentally punched and knocked out a woman, a bystander, who pressed charges for assault. And rather than face the charges, he ran off to Mexico. And Ruby went with him. They married in Mexico. And then a month later, they married again over the border in California. So she had a very colourful life. Her father, Jocelyn, who was a gentleman, that means he was moneyed, he was a Freemason, and he joined when he was a student at Cambridge. I also want you to note her red hair and her long face, which reminded me of Billy and his son James. If we imagine Ruby with dark hair, I think she would look a little like Mary McCartney. And also with her colouring, she looks a bit like James McCartney when he had a slimmer face. So finally, some joining the dots. Billy must have been conceived in 1936, but I can find no female friends of Alistair Crowley that have links to the Crawford family described in memoirs. As I said before, I didn't really expect to find his mother, especially not this way. Alistair Crowley had many sexual partners over a lifetime. I doubt he listed them all in his diaries, and since they are kept by the OTO, even if he did, we cannot read them directly. Likewise, if the Crawford Walker family I researched are Billy's biological family, I do not know of a connection between them and Alistair Crowley. However, that doesn't mean that there isn't one. Of the women that Alistair Crowley did know and who admired him in the 1940s, Pat Doherty, also known as McAlpine or McClellan, and Lady Frieda Harris, who illustrated Crowley's Toth tarot deck, were the most likely to have identified Billy as a child prodigy. However, Lady Frieda Harris moved to India in 1952, when Billy would have been 15. She lived there until her death in 1962, so I'm not sure how much influence she could have had on Billy. This means that Pat seems to be the best contender as the woman of renown mentioned in memoirs. She was known to have sent her own Crowley son to be educated at Gordonston in Scotland, so maybe Billy went there too. Pat was also known to have adopted several other children beyond her own four children. Maybe she took Billy under her wing as well. And so with that, I thank you very much for watching and goodbye.